This podcast is brought to you by Aspers Casino Newcastle, home of the £4 pint on match day. That's all Newcastle home games and any televised Newcastle fixture. The offer applies from midday until midnight on all draft beers. Be Gamble Aware, over 18s only. Visit BeGambleAware.org. Be Drink Aware and for details and T's and C's, visit AspersNewcastle.co.uk. It's the True Faith Newcastle United podcast. Newcastle have gone to Aston Villa. Unbeaten Aston Villa. No defeats at home in 11 months. Aston Villa. One away win all season. Newcastle United. Newcastle United have gone to Aston Villa and won by three fucking goals to one in simply the best away win I can think of in my lifetime because we're recording straight after the game and I haven't had time to research it properly. (laughs) I'm Alex. I'm joined by Cy, Charlotte and Ben. We're here to celebrate with you. We're here to make you happy. You're going to make us happy because you're listening and we rely on that feedback and validation because Newcastle <laughs> United have won 3-1 at Aston Villa in the unlikeliest of wins in the best of wins in the funniest of wins fuck off Villa we've always hated you 8-1 <laughs> across the season on aggregate because eight that's two. it well 8-2 across, <laughs> <season. laughs> across the season what a win Simon Campbell you're to my left how do you feel mate yeah I don't know like not that passionate I'll be honest like yeah it's class we've just beat them and yes 8-2 of the season I don't know if it's the best away win ever um, there's, lo- there's lots of contenders I'm sure we can we can look into that like you say shut um, up Si uh, inst- <laughs> instead of <laughs> yeah, ben, ben mate how do you feel it's <laughs> fucking believable instead of going to bed tonight I'm going to look at all the other away wins yeah I oh, know it's it's class and um, the, the best thing about this was that we went in the game as underdogs I was saying all week and last week and the week before that this Villa game is a free hit as long as we kind of get a decent performance and get ourselves back on track Everyone was willing to accept we might lose this game because of how, Villa, how good Villa have been, how good they are at home especially. And we've come into this game and kind of dominated it for, for large portions, haven't we? It wasn't just like a smash and grab. It wasn't kind of a, a nail biter. We were all in control of that game for 80 minutes of it. They had a little bit of a go. The home team's going to have a little bit of a go at some point. But other than that, we were absolutely dominated them and controlled the game and probably should have had more. Um, we'll talk about it. Longstaff in particular should have had chances, uh, should have put that chance away at the end. Gordon, I don't know how he's come away without a goal. Like there's, there's, there's so many more ways this could have gone. But yeah, absolutely class and massively sets the tone for another Eddie Howe resurgence second half of the season. Can't wait. Yes, that's it, isn't it? It's the renaissance. I think a lot of people, um, you included, were saying, uh, line in the sand will be after this game. Like, fuck the Villa game. Villa are very good. Villa are, you know, can't can't rely on that yeah. fixture. But I was sort of like, well, why can't, why can't we? But like all we've been told up until Christmas and, and just after Christmas was we're tired. We're tired because we've been playing three games a week with the same legs. We haven't been able to make changes. And and that was like, that was the main gripe. It, it, and obviously we talked about um, in-game management and choices that Howe and Tyndall maybe made that we, we didn't agree with in the games prior to this one. But the main thing was they're tired. Well, they've had like two weeks now and obviously played against Fulham and, and that wasn't like, a fully inspiring performance but it was okay this performance tonight and this bar a shaky little bit when they when they scored was like the the performance this is the beginning of the rest of the season to me and we'll talk about that later on in the podcast as well but I am absolutely buzzing I hoped we'd win uh, you know I, I'd have been so happy with a point but I am absolutely buzzing with three three goals three points a really, really encouraging performance uh, and and some momentum going into Luton at home this weekend. Yes, Dodsy. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely buzzing, mate. That was a, a massive, massive fair uh, win. I mean, obviously, it could, it could, it could, and should have been a lot, lot more. Um, we've absolutely embarrassed Villa tonight at home. Me and Sai were there last season for probably the, I would say, the most embarrassing performance we've put in under Eddie Howe. Um, it was three nil. We didn't even get a sniff in that game. Um, we were battered. And uh, came away from that with some really sour um, kind of memories. And, and coming into this game tonight, that, that was kind of what I was drawn back to. I was just thinking, oh, come on, please get a bit of fucking revenge. Well, boy, did we fucking get that tonight. Um, absolutely battered them. I mean, they've, they've not had a sniff in that game for 70, 80 minutes, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they get back into it. They nearly get a second. Obviously, it gets called off. But then um, Newcastle just carried on attacking when we, we, we said, I oh, hope we, we carry on doing that. And we did. And, and we should have added to, a, to to the three that we got. Um, and it was just a, a really, really um, dominant performance, as you say. I mean, we're literally falling to pieces. This act's obviously gone off there. Um, massive issue. But even even when he went off, the makeshift front three of, of Miggy, Gordon and, and Murphy still looked far more dangerous than, than, than Villa at that point. So um, 
it's a performance that fills us with huge amount of pride. I've got a lot of hope now for what we can do. I mean, if, if we do that to Villa, who, as, as you said, given the big build-up of, of the record they've been on and how good they've looked. I mean, they've beaten City and Arsenal this season there already. Um, and little old Newcastle have gone there and obviously <laughs> battered them. So, um, yeah, who bring it on, bring anyone on. We'll, we'll beat everyone and anyone that uh, we'll come up against. And it's it's a performance to, to build on. And we talk, we've been talking about this. We need to find that form. We did it last season. We went through a bit of a, an average run and then and kind of picked things up and, and went and got that top four um, uh, position uh, finished with, with, with the run we went on. We need that again now to, to kind of get back into those uh, European places and, and kick on. And do you know what? Top top four is not out of the question now. I think it's what? Down to oh. 11 points. I think Hello. it's 11 points. 11, 11 points behind. We, we can catch these. These were a fraud. The show tonight, how bad they were. Everyone should watch that game tonight. Like that high line, fuck off lads. Like <laughs> everyone should be playing the balls in behind. They'll start slipping. They've, I mean, that was it. It was a, a record built on, on Sandy Foundations. It was shite. Um, I don't know how they've, they've gone and beaten that long, but um, we've shown the blueprint to beat them twice now in two games, scored eight goals against them. Um, it's not hard, lads. So hopefully the rest of the league buck up their ideas and go and batter them. We'll reel them in. And uh, yeah, this, this is a one to, to kick on. Just to put this into context for everybody listening and watching, I'm sure you already know, before tonight, Aston Villa at Villa Park in the Premier League played 10, won nine, drawn one, conceded eight, scored 29. Newcastle United, away from home before tonight, uh, played 10, won two, lost seven, uh, conceded 22. And Newcastle United have gone there tonight and beaten them by three goals to one, with three nil up, with two nil up at half time, have lost their striker, are still injury ravaged. Questions asked of Eddie Howe, of the football club, of the transfer policy, of a lot more than that. And they've gone there and they've won three, one, and it could have been more. It really could have been more than that. And sure, to to go in at half time, two nil up in that scenario, and, and deservedly so. Yeah. It was this is no fluke. Mm-hmm. This is no fluke. Yeah. Like you said, Sai, Aston Villa, they have a spell. They have a spell in the second half. Teams teams at the top end of the Premier League, Aston Villa third place in the Premier League, could have gone two points off top tonight. They're going to have a spell. They're going to put you under pressure, particularly when you're in Newcastle United's position with um, scarcity of resources on the bench. And to go there and win. And Sai, you said, oh, you know, is it, the be- is it the best win in the decade? Is it the best Premier League away win? I can't think of many more, mate. I'm serious. I cannot, I cannot think Newcastle United, historically, are fucking shit away from home in the Premier League. Uh- you know they they are they, 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 there's big wins there's Arsenal away under Robson but Newcastle were not the 19th best away side in the Premier League yes they hadn't won in London for a long time Aston Villa I'll repeat it played 10 won 9 drew 1 unbeaten since February 2023 at home and Newcastle United one of the worst away teams in the Premier League have gone and on statistics have gone there and won and won comfortably at that mate well, when, you, when you put it like that yeah <laughs> no um I just think, yeah, there's been lots of great wins. I I, I compare this to uh, Spurs away last season, which was a massive uh, season-defining moment for us. Actually, hang on. where I, Not just that we beat Spurs at a time. They were our Champions League rivals, especially earlier in the season. The one at home later on in the season where we battered them, it still felt like a top-four battle, but we realised very quickly that, that Spurs dropped off. I suppose, as Ben said, Villa are going to drop off as well. This is the season-defining moment for us and the one that, that exposes Villa as the team that probably dropped away and don't get the top-four. So same kind of parallels there. But yeah... That kind of no one expect us to win this game. I didn't expect us to win this game, and not, as we said, we've come and done that and done it impressively, just like we did at Spurs last year. It wasn't just that we won the game; and it wasn't smash and grab. We went and beat them and played better than them, and we're a better side. Like we were just better than Villa tonight, and it's it's been a while since we've said that. It's been a while since we've sat and watched Newcastle and just said we were better than the opposition. And this is the opposition that, as you say, Dodzy, have been absolutely class this season. Like Villa have been a great team and, and, mm. and very good. Um, <laughs> ben disagrees, but their, their league position tells a story and we've just said, nah, we're fucking better. We, we weren't just better than them. We made them look shit. Like yeah. I really don't think that they, apart from that one little flurry of 10 minutes-ish where they came back into it and then we dealt with that, which we'll talk about, but bringing on Livermento and, and sort of nullifying Bailey a little bit. Like, done fine it's, it's their little like flurry is over yeah we were nervous because we're newcastle fans but we made them look bad tonight and they're a, they're a good side we're told all the time they're a good side so you wanted to talk about the <laughs> the fact that we found a way to win 
Yeah, that's the weird thing about it is that it, for all the, the we're saying about the, this great performance, it was still a bit of a, like an unconventional way, wasn't it? Two set pieces, Fabian Cher scoring twice, and then I don't know what we call the last goal. It was Murphy and Miggy combining goal um, funny. to, to oh, get an own goal, like it just <laughs> in, in, in the most bizarre of circumstances. Not that any of these things weren't deserved, and you know, on another day, like I said, Gordon probably gets two or three. He was that good, but. Just, it's nice that we're, we're trying things from set pieces. We're trying to find ways to win these games after so many unsuccessful attempts early in the season. It wasn't, it wasn't kind of the same. It wasn't like go again. It was like right, what's Villa's weakness? What what worked well at St James's? And we kind of it was a carbon copy of what we did at home. We're, they're, they're terrible with balls in behind, so we just we just did that to them loads, and it worked really well. And the lads with the pace absolutely paid dividends. Murphy a lot of credit to him for getting in behind loads. When Miggy came on, he did a lot of that running. Gordon was unreal on the left, and he was even better in the middle. Mm. Um, so it just it worked so well, and there was just there was stuff that we did today that we haven't done all season. So it feels like we're trying something new whilst sticking to the system, sticking to the kind of game plan. And it's just we're finding ways to win again, and that's what Eddie Howe with the lads on the training ground for two weeks. Yes, we had a cup game, but I'm sure there was some preparation in that time for this fixture as well. And yeah, the lads trained is so much different to the lads running on fumes, having played Champions League football in the middle of the week. Like, this is the team we got used to last season. We're going to see it again. And yes, there's a there's a question about the future that I'm sure we'll talk about, about we need to learn to be able to do that in shorter periods of time. And we've said that about how recently, but for now, one game a week. If we play, I just, we're going to win loads of games again. It's class. Just looked like us. It really did. There were recognisable patterns of play. There was three at the back when in possession there was Kieran Trippier pushed up high on the right hand side and uh, and Murphy um you know kind of pushed inside for for large spells it just it just looked uh, recognizable mm. familiar and not just in terms of the positioning of the players but the fact that Villa massively struggled against our press how long have we been able to say it since we've been able to say that from a, an away performance perspective it does, like you just said, Sai, it does just feel like a return to normality. We've had this horrific sabbatical of, you know, 10 games, 30 days, December, a little bit of shite um, in the end of November and, uh, and the start of January as well. But really, when you're looking back now at Sunderland training session, albeit, uh, but Sunderland, um, Manchester City, Fulham and Aston Villa, this is no longer a one-off that, he could possibly consider Newcastle United back in the context of they're still picking up horrific injuries because Alexander Rysak, we'll talk about it later in the show, but we're not, you know, that is a massive negative. And I think as much as you could say Villa tonight, um, they had the like kind of spell, Dubravka has made loads of saves, but, you know, played very well. The best thing that happened to Aston Villa tonight was nothing that they did. It was that Alexander Rysak goes off injured mm-hmm. in the 42nd minute, whenever it was. So Newcastle United have still rolled with a punch tonight, a pretty big punch, and come out with a 3-1 win. There's just so many promising signs there. Two away wins in the space of four, what, four days? You know, <laughs> what has that been all season? That You know, there's the Manchester United away win, which kind of stands out. Um, I mean, a <coughs> sea of, like, rubbish, r- realistically away from home. So... To do this this week when the stakes have been so high, seventh in the league, there's a couple of teams to play uh, later on this week, but seventh in the league, FA Cup fifth round, don't seem so bad, does it? It really doesn't seem so bad. In terms of performances tonight, there were big, big performances all over the pitch, but we have to start with two goal hero, possible hat-trick hero, if you had a bit more luck, Fabian, Fabian, Charlotte, sorry, Fabian. I heard it's Fabian. Fabian, Cher, Ben Wade, you're all... You're buzzing, you're delighted, you're in awe of the man. Tell us more. He's He's been fucking brilliant, hasn't he? I mean, for the majority of this season, I mean, you talk about obviously losing losing Bat, uh, Batman, Batman, um, <laughs> Batman. Uh, early, earlier in the season and, and we, we, we we heaped a huge amount of praise on his performances. Obviously, Shepard and LaSalle, he had to go and uh, move on to the left and, and he was brilliant, in, especially in that PSG game and had some really big performances, but he's just looked back to his absolute Rolls Royce self um, since he's gone back to that, that right uh, side. And it's no coincidence that as a, a defence, we've just looked far more solid since Botman's come back and everyone's playing in the uh, same positions. Um, and he, he put in another huge performance tonight, obviously, um, already mentioned in the, in the show, Watkins bullied us last season in this fixture. Um, didn't say it tonight. He was up for that battle tonight. And um, I think the referee was very harsh in some of the, the 50-50 kind of mm battles at, at halfway line that, that Watkins just seemed to get every decision for. Um, Shaw, <laughs> even when he got elbowed uh, pretty harshly, somehow managed to give a free kick away. But 
just he was he was just brilliant. I mean, you, you've got to start with the, the defense performance. I mean, this is a Villa side, as you say, they've got scored twenty nine goals in their home games and, and only managed one tonight. And even then, it it, it was a, a hard kind of fought. Uh, they had to work hard to get that one goal. Um, I just thought he was brilliant. And then obviously he, he got the part. He started at the other end. Mm-hmm. Um, two set pieces, just just looked dangerous all night, as you say. He could have had a third and uh, later on and. Um, in the game when the, the ball dropped from great defender from Longley to, to block him but uh, he just he, he was just dominant he was just too strong I mean the, the desire to get on that and what a finish as well I mean the volley for that first one he wrestles about two or three players to get to there and then just swings a boot and it's it's such a, a, a clean strike um, the bloke is just fucking class like the technique on him is, is unbelievable um, and, and, and we saw his, his range of passing as well today as well it was brilliant um, he's just a fantastic footballer and, and we've said it a number of times it's got to be one of the best businesses as a club we've done for the value for money that we've got out of him is incredible. And uh, he's, he's still a leader in this team. I mean, even you saw um, the period I saw alluded to where Villa kind of came up where there was a point where you could see him kind of shouting, calm the fuck down, lads, yeah. calm the fuck down. Like he, he just was unbelievable tonight. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love the bloke. If he doesn't score... He's still Newcastle United's best player for me yeah. in terms of exactly. that defensive yeah. performance, the the interceptions, the leadership, the positioning. <clears throat> just uh, j- just an absolutely brilliant performance, and you know, like you said, Ben, three million of your English pounds <laughs> um, five and a half years ago. Thank you, Rafa Benitez. It's a lot for this club, Rafa Benitez. Don't think he's done anything bigger than bringing that man to this football club for that amount of money. It's it it were like it doesn't worry me, but it is sort of astonishing to think how close we were to just letting him go. Two, yeah. two years ago, can't play in a back two. <laughs> <laughs> two years ago, like oh god, yeah, he was amazing tonight. His leadership, his maturity, the reading of the game, getting himself into the right position, and then as you said, Ben, like the ability to just finish in, in, in his precision is just it's lovely to watch and I think I think he's been elevated by the back four as a whole um you know that been made was potentially sort of a, a weaker link tonight but still you know the back four as a whole were excellent and he Shaw has share has definitely his game has instead of sort of being like oh they're a level Botman's a level above me it's like well I'm going to pull myself up to that kind of level and I'm going to show that I can play alongside a player like this and he absolutely can the, the the confidence or even cockiness that comes after he scores as well. He mm. starts doing really like ridiculous things and stuff that no centre half should be doing. I mean, even at the end, he's he's going on silly runs and taking on players. Um, he also, <laughs> uh, I would I would say both of his goals are more difficult chances to score than the Longstaff one at the end as well. Which and I love Longstaff and I'm not having a go, but they're they're you really are. good. They're really clever finishes. The one that even the second one. The, the, the kind of awareness and the, the, the quick reactions to go to that ball and to slot it past Martinez, who, to be fair, is a very good goalkeeper. He was getting out of stuff and he was, he was covering his angles well. But Cher just was really good, just found the gap and, and, and poked it past him. Like, it's really, really good. But yeah, there was just moments in that game where you look and he's, he's, he's so, so confident in himself. And I didn't... I don't know where he got so cocky. Like he used, to, he used to be the opposite. He used to like look. look he, he saw what I saw. Say that they were absolute frauds and they were shite. And he thought, I'm just going to run the length of the pitch and skin all yeah. these. The Maybe Marseille, the, the Marseille turn didn't quite come off, but uh, <laughs> but wasn't he's, far he, off. he's the original shit house um, mm. mag, isn't he? And he, he just, you just saw that kind of. There's that little kind of cheeky grin he has, <laughs> and he's like, I'm just class. I'm going to fucking do these here, and he did. <laughs> Maybe someone handed him a mirror and he was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> there, is, um, there is something to be said, Charlotte, like, like you just alluded to that. It's beautiful. It's, no. It's beautiful. He's beautiful. Both. Everything's beautiful. We just beat Villa. It's glory. On the night that Newcastle <laughs> United go to Aston Villa and win by three goals to one to end the unbeaten home record. The back four. Well, the back five. Let's do it. Let's, let's call up Martin Dubravka. He came back into the team and looked terrible, <laughs> uh, particularly in that in that Spurs and all those Spurs and Everton defeats. But you know, it's um, it's one goal conceded against Fulham and against Aston Villa, two tough away games in terms of the the home records of both of those clubs in the Premier League, and they just they just look good. Teams teams struggle to get in behind us. There was a little bit of conversation after Fulham saying we looked open. I don't think we looked open against Fulham. I don't think Fulham got in behind us necessarily. I thought. Teams, when you go away from home in the Premier League, they're going to have moments, they're going to have spells, they're going to create chances. It's okay. And I think potentially that, I'm talking everyone, fan base, players, even manager and coaching team here, maybe we forgot a little bit that winning away from home in the Premier League is hard and sometimes you have to ride your luck. It's very rare that you'll win away from home in the Premier League. 
without being under sustained pressure and the result being at risk until tonight when it was never in doubt because Newcastle United battered them and were 3-0 up. But realistically, I think that back four are getting back or close to back to last season's form, considering that they're missing kind of, I don't want to say world-class, but, you know, very, very good footballers in Tonali, Willock and Jolinton in front of them. Throw Elliot Anderson in there as well, who'd be getting a game if he was fit ahead of Lewis Miley, probably for that back four, as well as Dubravka to be playing as well as they are. It just bodes incredibly well for the rest of the season. And teams, you know, Villa tonight had a lot of plans to try and do Newcastle United kind of on the byline, like work work the team, move side to side, get some patterns of play to get Newcastle United to the byline. We had an answer for it. Sven Botman, Fabian Shaw, the fullbacks, they knew where to stand. Bruno Gomares was outstanding. He's been, you know, now we, now we can't make a tackle. He's been this unbelievably disciplined yeah. number six, sitting in front of the back four, relieving pressure, making interceptions. Um, and he's done very well tonight, again, to avoid a yellow card, which would result in a two-game ban. He's still got a few more games to go before he can get through this. But, wow, what what a collective effort from, from all of the players, but particularly that back four. But who wants to talk about Martin Dubravka? Um, I thought he was I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, in the face of um, injury as well, because, you know, we had nine minutes added on to the end of the game there. And the reason for that was predominantly that Martin Dubravka went down twice. First uh, needed treatment, sort of rubbing the side of his side, side of his sort of hip. Fabian, like, Fabian Cher again. He did everything tonight of Cher. He also yeah. injured our goalkeeper by, <laughs> yeah. by clattering, clattering into, into him. him. Yeah. Um, uh, and then and then sort of played on and sat down and had, had to be strapped his, his leg had to be strapped up but um continued to play and I, I, you know Carius did look quite optimistic and got warming up but he went straight back to his seat um Martin Dubravka was excellent tonight I, I think I think what was particular um Villa weren't particularly threatening on goal. He, he did make a couple of good saves. They they threw the ball into the stands a couple of times. They weren't particularly threatening. What was nice about Martin Dubravka was his command of the whole thing. Um, we, we've been talking for weeks about how we need this sweeper keeper. And he's not that necessarily yet, but he's kind of... It feels like he's, he, he knows what he needs to be and he's starting to step up. And his command of that whole back line, has, he was coming further out of his box tonight. He was, um, he was reading the game really really well um and there were moments where they kind of broke through in particular we've sort of talked about that 10 minute period um where they they did score but i don't really think he's massively at fault for that i think it's it was it wasn't a very beautiful goal it was just a scrappy goal and it was a frustrating one to concede but I, I, yeah i just every game that we watch him in okay it's not clean sheet but you see him growing into it and it's it's great we said, we said it on Saturday, it's trust. The trust is forming mm, between mm-hmm. him and that back four. It wasn't there when he first came at the team. They hadn't really played with him. You know, um, Cher, and, Cher, well, Cher had, but, you know, Botman and, and Tripp, you haven't played many games as Martin Dubravka. They, they seem to understand each other. He does sit deep, but he stays on his line a bit more. They know that. They know to kind of just allow for that. He, he has started, like you say, Shaw. He was coming and claiming a few more balls tonight. Mm-hmm. There were still times where you, you kind of saying, come on, man, come out. But they, they at least know what they're doing. They, they, they can react to that now, whereas I think in those first couple of games, they were looking back and going, why is he all the way over there? And it was just we were getting caught out. Um, yeah, he was brilliant. I thought he did make some really good saves tonight. He, he's done that every game since since the start of the year, basically. Um, starting at Liverpool, he made some great saves there, and he's he's growing in confidence as well. And just the fact that he was playing through what was clearly a lot of pain, um, with both right, both yeah. thighs seemed to be knackered. <laughs> how the bloke was still standing and yet still making great dives and saves. Like I've I've got a lot of credit from him. And yeah, Carrius probably would have been fine to come on for ten minutes, but. It's it's almost better that Dubravka finished the game. It, it kind of shows his hearts there, and I'm, I'm really pleased that that back five is knitting together. And they, you can't. <laughs> I love Livermento, and I want to see him play more, but you can't change that back five at the minute because it's starting to settle again. Yeah, and I think Dubravka doesn't make loads of brilliant saves tonight, but everything else he does is almost perfect. Compare him to Martinez in terms of dealing with shots close to his body. Martinez is hoying them back out in front yeah. of himself. Um, Dubravka holds everything he's imperious from crosses he comes out, he claims, he, he moves the ball on quickly, he was pretty good with his feet tonight as well, kind of no issues with that and before the game on TNT they're talking about how much pressure Villa put goalkeepers under, well Dubravka felt you know, re- seemed really comfortable with mm. that tonight so, you know it, there was a lot of question marks about him when he first came back into the team it was suggested Newcastle would be looking for players like David De Gea or they needed to sign a goalkeeper I mean, we can't sign anyone, which is a, another story for another podcast, it seems. But 
there's just no way Newcastle United right now need another goalkeeper. They're fortunate that they've got a quality, the, you know, the caliber of him in the in number two until Nick Pope comes back. We have to talk about Anthony Gordon, even though Gordon doesn't get on the score sheet tonight. It very much feels like Anthony Gordon's game. Sai, thoughts? Yeah, I, I watched the the three minute YouTube package just before we started, and it's like the first two minutes of it. It's just Anthony Gordon not scoring. Uh, just all massive highlights, all great chances. And he just to come away from like, and how has he not scored? He's probably thinking, how have I not scored tonight? He was unbelievable. And for, for to have to come in and play as the centre forward for, you know, a good chunk of that game as well. And and still stand out, still look like the best player, still look like the the any outlet was, he was involved. He wasn't, you know, the, the, the final ball, but he was always involved in every attack. And yeah, that guy, compared to this time last year uh ben you and i were there and we watched him get absolutely done by ashley young who was like 38 or whatever um he he owed them one he owed them one for that performance he got he got embarrassed in that game and it's all it all goes back to him not being at the levels he is at the levels this season and he's shown it time and time again and what i liked about this was that he had 90 minutes in him as well you know he, he was going right at the end uh, he, he just he just Un- unbelievable I'm actually gutted he hasn't got more stats to show for his uh, for his performance tonight because he deserved a goal he deserved everything tonight and he's yeah he is some player I thought that the the shift into into that uh centre forward position when Isaac had to go off which is obviously a concern but one we'll talk about later on in the show um he just he just he took it with ease and it also meant that you know th- we had the benefit of Miggy moving out to the left which is a which is positive and it was nice to see that happen but um I don't know if anybody there was a profile on Gordon in the athletic a, a few weeks ago and what it said what it talked to people who had coached him and stuff and and one of his youth coaches from Everton or maybe not Everton yeah it was Everton um yes had said um that they saw him maturing into a centre forward. That's the way that they considered his sort of narrative to go as a footballer. And you and and I was sort of like, oh, interesting, because he's so um, he's got so much pace. He's like so fast, and he's, he's so useful in the channels. That it, it, is that really where he's going to be useful or or utilised best in in that centre forward position? And tonight, I could totally see why somebody much more attuned to the game than I <laughs> has made that observation about his game he's just he, he's so attack minded he does not stop he knows exactly where he needs to be and yeah okay some of the balls weren't getting to him but he was in he, I just thought he was excellent tonight he read he read the game perfectly and you're right he had a score to settle didn't he and he absolutely did that it's just a shame like you say he wasn't on the score sheet because he should have been yeah I mean he's for me he's, his energy was probably the, the biggest factor and terms of Newcastle um creating so many chances and, and causing Villa so many problems he, he just didn't stop running all night and especially when you think obviously when this goes down you're just thinking fucking hell like what what's this going to look like now um it didn't look any different he he played and, and to your point there um he was almost like the perfect foil for for Isak going off like he played exactly the same way in terms of the runs his, his runs mm-hmm. in behind caused him problems so many times um and it, it just, they, they had no answer for it. I mean, every time we wanted to go direct, he, he was there getting on the end of it and causing them problems and, and pushing them back in there. Yeah, I just thought that that was a, a really mature performance. He, he had to stand up for us tonight. I mean, as we say, obviously Murphy um, had, had, a, had a good game, but he, he's quite a frustrating player at times in terms of his, his lack of kind of reading of players, trying to play him in a position and stuff. He doesn't always read it. Um, obviously, Miggy ended up playing on the left and um, obviously there's been, he's been ill this week, obviously missed the Fulham game through that illness. There was links of him potentially going. You kind of wonder, well, what what's he going to look like coming in? How's, maybe how how much is he prepared for this game to kind of come in and contribute and whatever? Um, so we we needed Gordon uh, to turn up tonight, and he just he just led the line unbelievably. I mean, even on the left in in, in the first half, um, he was a constant threat. I mean, he he, he gave Matty Cash a really tough game, and and even Conte. I mean, they were they were TNT's coverage all before the game was about how good Conte was, and and he got run ragged tonight by um, by. <clears throat> by Gordon and uh, yeah it, it was just a huge huge performance and I think back to when when we signed Gordon I mean I I, I, I didn't particularly like him at Everton um, wasn't sure he was going to be worth the money that we paid for him and you look at him now his development he's he's turned full circle I mean he's probably the most important player at Newcastle that has been this season in a lot of games and um, he's yeah I, I, I don't know where we'll be without him so Thank fuck they got the deal done. <laughs> the, the club made that little uh, video montage last week about you, didn't they? All the yeah. kind of people yeah, writing them It was them just off. you. All, no, my, all, my, all, my, all my Twitter accounts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Ridiculous. I don't even think he gets the assist for the for the volley that leads to the second goal, yeah. which yeah, is an yeah, unbelievable yeah. strike. Like the fact he's, I mean, he plays Miggy in, who then gets the ball to move. He doesn't get an assist for that. The volley, like the, the bloke deserves something for this game. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen, I don't know. Well, who he's was, getting the plaudits on the truth. I don't know who was man of the match. He's, he's my man of the match by, by far, but yeah. yeah it's it was Shaw, Shaw got it, it's but uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he, he was up there. He was, yeah, yeah. he was unbelievable. I think we have to, to credit as well Eddie Howe with lots of things here. You know, the the press was back and it wasn't, you know, earlier on this season we, we looked at um, Brighton away in particular and a couple of other of these away games where we'd come and we'd press for the first 5-10 and then either, you either conceded or it didn't work or teams played through it fairly easily and everyone just kind of like thought, well, fuck, we'll have to sit back then. There was none of that tonight. I mean, first of all, Villa couldn't get out. They just couldn't get out. It was like a home game at times in terms of the press and the effectiveness of it. It's a ballsy thing to go to Aston Villa, who who play a high line, uh, and, and and I think a lot of Newcastle fans would have thought, you know, that that's something we can't exploit. We did exploit, but to 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 press as high as we did, and to make Villa start to kick it long, and for Villa to kind of consistently kick it into the middle of the pitch with no clear direction, it it totally quietened the crowd. It completely quietened yeah. the crowd down. This is a side that could have that are essentially in a title race before tonight. Probably not now, but we're going to go two points off top of the league and. It was just silent, and I know it's such a, um, particularly since I hate Villa, but it's such a, you know, Premier League thing to say these days. All the home fans were shit. Well, they fucking were. You mm-hmm. know, like I'm talking at nil nil here. I'm talking at nil one. There was no reaction from the Villa fans, and I feel like how was gamble there. Again, I said it earlier in the show. It just feels like us. It just felt natural. It felt like the players were more comfortable with it. It felt mm-hmm. like they've been given a freedom after the Fulham win to say. Go and press the fuck out of these lads because one, they don't like it. Two, like you said, Ben, no one's really done it to them apart from us at their place this season. And let's not die wondering. And I just think his game management was perfect. I think he goes five at the back when Villa get one back. He's been criticised recently for not doing that. Just, you know, big one for Eddie Howe tonight. Big win. Yeah, I think um, it, it was massive, wasn't it? I mean, you're right. I think the, the key word you said there is the, the bravery. I mean, he's gone in and impressed that Villa side that everyone's been kind of um, they've, they've just been kind of lauding how good they are that midfield and yet we've gone there with Miley and Longstaff and, and Bruno on a yellow card who can't make a tackle <laughs> three and, midfielders who can't tackle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and and we've we've pressed them in and I don't I've I've never I mean it would it was like the Newcastle of of old of the good old days last season where teams could not get out against where and we just won the ball back so many times or they played really sloppy passes and. Um, it was just completely refreshing to see us go and, and just not pay them any respect. It, it didn't matter that they're, they're this side that can't be beaten at home. We went there and, and showed them the respect of a team that we know we've beaten 5-1 already this season and that was the most refreshing thing to see. Um, and then you spot on that the, the point I want to make was it, the, the kind of the key moment in that game really probably came at 70 minutes when they get one back. There's that chance, kind of the, the disallowed goal very quickly after mm. And he makes the sub to bring on Livermento. And just before that, Villa had got back in the game because Leon Bailey had, had come on mm. and, and caused Dan Byrne so many issues. And um, we, we, as as you say, you kind of you you're worried because he hasn't really done it before not tonight. Um, that that switch, and he did it at the perfect time. Livermento comes on, and Bailey is out of the game from that point. I don't. He maybe has one or two kind of runs where he gets away from Livermento, but for the the majority of that kind of last 20, 30 minutes of that game. Livermento's got Bailey in his pocket. So that's another avenue that Villa have lost where they thought they were going to get a bit of joy and they don't get it. Um, and basically they were, were <laughs> they, they were having to rely on John McGinn to try and break <laughs> us down. I mean, I'll, I'll have that every he day. He was literally week, trying to break us down as well tonight. A lot of them were, they got very scrappy. It was just so smart, so disciplined. You know, um, we have got that midfield who aren't going to win many balls it's not we don't have joe linton in there who's going to tackle and smash people it was more disciplined right you're just gonna to have to sit in front protect the defense don't leave any gaps and we didn't leave any gaps filler had to work really hard like you say ben just to get the one goal but first half they just couldn't find anything they couldn't find any way through us and then we were just leaving gordon and murphy up in the corners and saying right we're just going to hit those channels and push them back and get in behind and get in behind and over and over and again, we did it, and Villa didn't really have an answer. Like the goal was always coming for us. Yes, it came from a set piece, but we were the most threatening team throughout that game for for all those those reasons. And I think we just just got it absolutely tactically spot on every time. I don't know why, by the way, the, the TNT cameras spent a lot of time on Unai Emery's face, just loads of time yeah. looking at him. 
And he was just Creepy perplexed and he, he didn't really know what to do. You could tell he just had no answers to, to what we yeah. did tonight and it's all it's all on anyhow. Creepy little freak. I know who I want as my manager. <laughs> I think it's important to, to celebrate this win and we're doing that. It's Luton at home on Saturday. A fantastic result for them tonight, which also helps us out because Brighton are now below us. But Charlotte, you know, the, the, the question I think a lot of Newcastle fans think that we'll be thinking about is, is this us now? Are we back? We've got Harvey Barnes to come back. We've got Joe Willock. We've got Callum Wilson. We've got Elliot Anderson. We've got Nick Pope. All to come back into the team this season. And Alexander Isak. Alexander Isak now. Does this result give you a lot of positive feelings for the rest of the season? It gives me so many positive feelings deep down in my belly. Um, yes, it does. Because I, it, like I've said a couple of times now, this is the second half of our season, we're basically playing just once a week. We have um, the cup game at the end of February. That's ages away, it's a month away. Um, but in that time, we're, we've got we've had this sort of week where it's been a little bit more congested, but we're playing once a week. We've got Luton, who are good. They beat, they beat Brighton tonight. That's, that's a good result. Um, we've got Forest, who are less good, I think. Um, they're not to be underestimated, those those opposition sides. They're absolutely not. We've, we've both beaten us this season. But I just think that there's so much to play for. I think that this team is way less fatigued. And I think that going into the second half of the season, everything is to play for. Ben's talking about top four. Ben's talking about that's how good Ben's feeling. I think Ben might be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love... I love to get excited, Ben, but I I don't I don't know if we're gonna finish fourth. We'll sixth, we'll fifth, see. but fourth. Four, fifth or sixth? Like if you if you told me that one month ago or after the Liverpool game even, I'd have been like, You've you're on you're on like I'd like to be a one what you're on because I don't agree. But it's it's not just the win, it's the performance, it's the attitude, it's the momentum, it's the confidence, it's all of those things packed into one and we are such a momentum driven team. We go on these runs, we have these um th- these good patches, and I think we were due one, well overdue one. And we have a lot of players to come back. Wilson should be coming back. Um Harvey Barnes should come into the side basically for the first time because he only played like one game. Um the other players that you've mentioned may, may be a bit longer. Um, we don't have timelines on them, so it's impossible to know. But we have enough now. We have enough and enough of a gap between games for me to think we, we can get something from almost every game that we've got coming up. I just don't see why not, based on the, what I saw tonight. It's, it's a really funny one because, yeah, the next three games, Luton, Forest and Bournemouth are teams that we have zero points from so far this mm-hmm. season. <laughs> they, they all beat us in the, in the, in the reverse fixtures. Uh, but you're right, Charlotte, one game a week. And then the only three game week we've got is a championship away FA Cup game. So like it's a really good month at February. It really is a chance to put the kind of momentum together that could see us get into, into the Champions League if it weren't for how many points behind we we find ourselves. I kind of, I kind of get your optimism, Ben, because I think if we win the next three games, why not then win another four out of the next five? You know, I think it's a kind of season-defining run that we could get ourselves on. Where that leaves us, I don't know, but I think the the, the options are still open. It depends on other teams and how they get on. For example, Villa might fall away. Other teams around us will drop points. Whether they'll drop the kind of points we need them to do for that to be a real reality, I don't know. But yeah, the Isaac one's the only concern. Now, he didn't he didn't get stretched off. He didn't limp off. He looked a little bit uncomfortable, but he kind of walked off the pitch unaided. If it's a groin, as, as the early reports seem to say, a couple of weeks maybe. Wilson was meant to be nearly back. So with one game a week, we'll probably manage as long as we don't lose him for any longer than that. Now we don't, we have no idea because every injury we get can either be two weeks or two years. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's that ridiculous. But that that is a big Big problem. If we don't have Isaac, yes, Gordon was great tonight, but we know that he's not the answer to centre forward every game. So we need either Gordon or Wilson to be fit. If we have any period where we don't have a striker, that's going to really affect how that possible momentous run could go. We've got Fabian so, Chair though, so it's actually fine. We do, we do. Well, that is something we've <laughs> talked about, isn't it? Um, you know, Goals coming from the rest of the team, we need that to, to start kicking in again because we've relied so much on Isaac and Wilson, who's got like eight or nine goals this season. You know, Our centre forwards have been our only source of goals this season, really. Um, with a few here and there. So, yeah, share getting on the score sheet. Longstaff needs to start putting some of these chances away. Miggy and Murphy combining there. You know, if we can get goals from the rest of the team, then it's less of a worry. But, yeah, Isaac's so important to us. I, I'm a little bit worried about that. But otherwise, assuming it's not too bad with him, I've got so much optimism for the rest of the season again. I'm just 
forget about the rest of the season. Every corner is a fucking event. <laughs> like, we're so good at corners. Now, where's that Where's that come from? <laughs> like, goal on Saturday, tran- more chances on Saturday. Could have had three or four from them tonight. And also, uh, it takes me back to the first corner that we had of the game, which was diabolical. <laughs> um, so please, lads, just get the ball in the box on Kieran Trippier's right and one of the big lads, uh, preferably Fabian Cher, but also... Botman and Byrne, get your heat in it, and, and all will be well. That makes me incredibly excited for the rest of the season because, like you said, Sai, it's actually, we went through a spell this season where, particularly at home, we could kind of score goals, but away from home, we just didn't look like breaking teams mm. down, and now we're a threat from set pieces again. Teams were just kind of fouling us in and around the penalty area, thinking, well, this is okay. There's nothing yeah. bad's going to happen here. Well, we've changed that a lot, so it's really, really exciting. I mean, Ben... Are you tongue in cheek about Newcastle pushing the top four? I mean, it's it's a lot of points to make up, but I what, look at eleven. The te- is it now? Yeah, uh, so eleven after tonight. We're thirty-two. Villa are on forty-three. So yeah, eleven yeah. points. I mean, the, that, that is so. I I think Villa will be the one that we'll compete with, but they're still in Europe. They've still got a lot of games playing that. They're still in FA Cup at the minute. They probably beat Chelsea at home. Um, so they they're going to have other competitions. They're going to have the fixture pile up that we've kind of struggled with. They've had no injuries so far this season. They'll, they'll get hit by by some at some point. And I just think, as I say, I've, I've, I've seen game. I've seen a lot of games of Villa over the last kind of twelve months un, under Emery, however long he's been there, um, and and they ride their luck massively. They rely on Martinez to pull out world class saves. I mean, he did it tonight, and yet they've still conceded three. They're not this kind of all conquering side that. I mean, for me, they were never in the title title race. I think that was way beyond them, and I think they've been on a good run. Give them credit, but I, I don't think they're up to the level of even us. Um, I mean, we saw even last year they they kind of went on that ridiculous run, but they kind of fell away. I mean, they didn't they didn't get anywhere near top four last year, even though they went on the ridiculous run. I just don't see um, I, I just don't see them being able to go on kind of to carry on the moment. I mean, when you look at the run they've been on, that is their run. I think now they've lost it. I don't see them kind of putting together another one. I think teams will will work out. Um, having seen how effective we were tonight, teams will start hitting them and, uh, and with, with just playing direct against them and, and teams are going to have some, some choice. So, I mean, that's, that's where I think Villa will fall away. But for us, um, I, I think he's a spot on. We're, we're a momentum team, as you said. We're, we're a side that when we get running hot, we run very, very hot. And we did it last year. Um, and I think, yes, injuries is, is an issue. But, I mean, we, literally, we've, we've, we've had so many knockbacks this season. Um, we're going to surely start getting a bit of fortune in terms of hopefully Isak is fine. Um, I think if, if he can um, finish the end of the season, I mean, he, he's a de- he's a game changer. But you look at Gordon, I mean, as I say, Gordon, I mean, thank fuck Miggy's not left. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> I'll say that right now. I was one of those hoping, uh, thinking, let's cash in on him. But uh, thank God he's he's still here. Because again, playing, playing on the left, he just looks at yeah. a, a, a dangerous threat. I think we should say that a bit more often. Um so yeah, there's there's a lot of things to be positive, but the big one for me is, is as as we've said, the back four. We just we don't look like we're gonna concede too many goals now. And if we can minimise, I mean, that was what our um, top four was built on last season was having that incredible defensive record, the best defensive record in the league for the first kind of half of the season. Um, and it kind of came unstuck a little bit, but we found our mojo back again towards the back end of the season. I think if you if you're stopping teams from scoring, then you only need to score one two goals to, to win games and I think we've got that in this team and as you say if we're then starting to score some goals from set pieces we're going to pick up a lot of points so I think um, obviously the away form needs to improve massively the home form's been really good we've had a couple of odd, the odd bad result but um, I mean even the, the, the Man City and Liverpool games we, we went toe to toe with those two teams at times when we're nowhere near our full strength so I think you can take a lot of um, confidence from the way the team are playing the confidence they're playing with We've, we've got players that can hurt every team in this league and we just need to give them the ball. And the best thing I saw tonight was how directly we hit um, Villa. That's always been my criticism about when we're in possession. We're a bit slow at times to move the ball. We we hit them quickly tonight and they couldn't cope with us. And when you've got the pace of Murphy, Gordon, um, Miggy, obviously there's other players to come back. Um, we're... we're we're, we're a hard team to play against. There's not really, we don't really have any weaknesses when we're when when we're kind of confident. And I mean, this this was Bruno kind of playing. Didn't didn't really have much of a say in the game tonight as well, which is huge. Imagine him playing kind of an eight nine out of ten. We'll we'll batter teams. Fuck it, I'm with you, Ben. We're going to win fourth. <laughs> That's it. Um, you've you've absolutely torn apart Villa season. They're going to finish like ten. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're near the team really you've got to catch a spurs and you know they're they're, they're they, absolutely they're, capable they're, of dropping points they're villa 2.0 with their <laughs> high line we're gonna they get play, to, they play a higher high line we're gonna get the spurs at home in april again and beat them six nil and then yeah that's it we're done honestly no, i mean that's the thing there's not I mean, we've got the, the two hard fixtures. Well, three hard fixtures. Okay, we'll include this one, even though it wasn't a hard fixture. But <laughs> we've, we've played Man City twice. We've played Liverpool twice. Who is there else to play? We're going to run the table. Arsenal away. Yeah, we, yeah, we'll beat them there, shite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a good point that you make, Ben, of the top five. There's only Arsenal away and Spurs at home to play for the rest of the season. So the fixture list is, is somewhat kind to Newcastle in that very hard start that we had and very hard period we've had now. In fact, to take three points from Liverpool, Man City and... Villa, when it probably could and should have been four points at least, mm. um, is incredibly encouraging if these are the bad old days, if this mm. is the tough times. Mm. And the kind of final point I want to make on the podcast is that there was a lot of reasons to be negative going into na- tonight's game. Um, FA Cup win aside, Newcastle have had a, a good, a, a really good 24 hours in a, in a period when things just started to maybe look like they might fall apart in terms of a belief from sections of the fan base in the in, in the direction of travel we haven't signed anyone we've got mounting injuries we've got very good players in Joe Linton and Tonali not going to play again this season it didn't look like we we're going to bring in a replacement even on own we might there's still two days left of this transfer window it would have been easy for the team the players the manager to go into tonight in this very difficult fixture heads down uh, feeling sorry for themselves and instead they've come out with one of the most emphatic away performances ever seen from Newcastle United in the Premier League uh, and probably the, the the biggest best performance under Eddie Howe I'm going to say it and the home form is, is different and you reference that Spurs game there's been some great moments at home but we've not really gone away from home to a top top side in the league and one you reference Spurs side it was a really good result at the time but Spurs were falling apart it was already rumoured Conte was going to be away they, they hadn't signed, you know, there was all sorts of problems at Spurs. This Villa side are supposed to be the real deal. Ben has um, systemically dismantled that <laughs> on this podcast. But, you know, no one tonight gave Newcastle much of a chance. Uh, no one saw this coming from an Aston Villa perspective. And I just feel like it's been done against the odds. It's been done when the chips are down. And like you said, Charlotte, it just makes me incredibly optimistic for the rest of the season and never write off these lads. It doesn't matter the fix. It doesn't matter the injury list. Don't write them off. And, we, you know, lots of people wrote them off uh, ahead of Manchester City. They wrote them off again tonight. And, you know, they've, they've, they've unlucky to lose against Manchester City. And they got a deserved win tonight. And the away end seemed absolutely bouncing. And it's just a great night to be a Newcastle United fan. But Aston Villa won. Newcastle United 3. A brilliant, brilliant away win. I'm absolutely buzzing. Thank you so much. For everybody, to everyone who's listened and watched the podcast, we have a live show coming up on February the 16th. You can get tickets. There's a link in the description to this podcast. Lots of tickets sold already. Would love to see you come and join us on the night. I'll leave it there. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks very much for watching. Aston Villa 1, Newcastle United 3. Speak to you after we beat Luton, probably at the weekend. Bye-bye. This podcast is brought to you by Aspers Casino Newcastle, home of the £4 pint on match day. That's all Newcastle home games and any televised Newcastle fixture. The offer applies from midday until midnight on all draft beers. Be Gamble Aware, over 18s only. Visit BeGambleAware.org. Be Drink Aware and for details and T's and C's, visit AspersNewcastle.co.uk.